Now for me, a piece is not completely done until I've actually seen it in my own two hands. It's not enough for me to see it on the screen like this. I really need to see it printed and binded like this. So stick around, I'll show you how to do it. Now first things first, after you've finished your piece in the notation software of your choice, you're gonna to have to export your piece as a PDF file. Now in this particular demonstration, I'm gonna focus on printing orchestral scores. In the US, that's typically the 11 by 17 inch size, otherwise known as tabloid size. And if you're not from the US, you can use the A3 size paper. It's about the same size as the tabloid paper that I'm using. Now the size of the paper is not the only consideration, it's the quality of the paper as well. When you present your materials to a conductor or really anybody performing your music, you want that music to have a high quality touch. That's going to be the very first impression that that person is going to have of the music itself before they even hear it or rehearse it. Now the paper I personally use is called the Spring Hill Offset Cream 70 pound text offset paper, which comes from this company called Limited Papers out in New Jersey. For me, that's my local paper store, but you can probably find something close to that. I left that down in the description. No affiliate link, no sponsorship. I've just been using that for many years now. Now, the most obvious thing about this paper is the color. It's a kind of off-white, they call it cream colored paper. But another thing that you should notice here is the weight of the paper. I said before that it's a 70 pound text offset paper, but I think it's more important to look at another metric and that's gram per square meter. So take a look at this. So right at the bottom, you'll click on weight chart and we're gonna find the 70 offset text number that we've been looking at this whole time. Now go all the way to the right and you'll see the grams per square meter number. In this case, it's about 105. So this is really what you should be looking for. Any kind of paper you're using, you wanna make sure that it's around 105 grams per meter give or take five or 10 grams or so. Now that you bought your paper, of course, now you're gonna need really the most expensive part of this operation and that's the printer. Now I myself use this big hunk of a printer. This is not necessary at all. There are actually plenty of printers out there that do a similar job, but at a fraction of the cost. I just like this particular printer because it's a laser jet printer that prints 11 by 17 inch tabloid size paper, as well as this larger size 12 by 18 inch paper that I use to print my parts. Now, a much cheaper alternative to this big hunk of a laser jet printer is to get yourself a little inkjet printer that prints up to this 11 by 17 inch size. Now, while these printers are definitely a lot cheaper than the one I have, the downside is that they're a lot slower and they take up more ink. So that's just something to keep in mind while you're taking a look at printers. Other than that, you don't really need anything spectacular for this printer. All it needs is that it has to be a black and white printer and print up to 11 by 17 inches. It doesn't even really need to print on both sides of the paper. You can easily manually feed the printer and do it yourself that way. But of course, if you're planning to print frequently, a printer like the one that I have is a must in my opinion. So why don't we go ahead and print something? So here I am printing, 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 and you can see all the pages coming out. You'll see that it's all double-sided. A few moments later. Phew, okay, we're done, we're done. Whew, that was fun. Wait, we're not? Oh, okay, well, what else do we have to do? Oh, we have to bind the score? Oh, right, well, that's right, of course. Now I just have a bunch of loose papers. How am I gonna present that to the person that needs to see it? For me, I finished the job by hole punching and coil binding the score. Now this binding machine you see here is very heavy duty, very expensive. I've been using it for over 10 years. That being said, there are many cheaper alternatives that I've linked down in the description below for you to check out. Now with this particular paper, you can't hole punch more than four or five sheets of paper at the same time. So if you have a stack of say 50 sheets, you're gonna have to do 10 of these hole punches. So the process can actually take some time, but it's definitely worth it at the very end. Now after I finish hole punching one side, you'll notice that I have a lot of empty holes at the very edge of the paper. So what I gotta do now actually is flip the paper the other way, 180 degrees, and then put it back inside the hole punch machine, line it up by putting one of the holes on top of this little indentation that's inside the machine itself. And then I'm going to actually press the lever once again. So in total, if you have 50 sheets and you put in five sheets of paper at each time, what you're gonna have to do is push that lever down 20 times. So it does take a little bit of time to learn, but once you got the hang of it, 
I promise you it's a breeze. And now that your score is hole punched, the last step of the process is to coil bind the score. Now I like to use the spiral coils from a website called mybinding.com. A few years ago, I bought a few hundred of these coils and they still haven't run out. So I'm really happy so far with how these coils have been working for me. I like to use the clear ones. You can easily get any color you want. You can get black, you can get purple, you can get pink, red, any color you want. I just like how the clear spiral coils look on my score. But again, you can go for black, for example. I've seen that color as well. Just something that looks as professional as possible will do the trick. And also make sure that when you buy these coils, you get the right length. You don't wanna get one that's exactly 17 inches, for example. You wanna get one that's a little longer, 18, 19, 20 inches, so that you can make sure that it will actually fit through all the different holes on your score. Okay, now that you have your hole punch score and your coils, take your score and put it on a flat surface. Then take one end of the coil and slowly wrap it through all the holes of the score until you get to the very, very end. Now, once you get to the end of the score, you'll realize that if you don't close the coil in some way, the papers are just gonna all unwind and fall out and you'll have a big mess on the floor. So what I like to do is to wrap the coil around a little bit more and extend it about an inch or two past the edge of the score. That way I have enough room to cut the coil and then close the coil off so that the papers don't fall out. Now, the way you do this is you make sure that the coil crimper is in a horizontal position with the red dot facing up on the right side of the crimper. Then go to the spot of the coil that you wanna cut. Cut it real fast like this. Don't let go. Turn clockwise to the right like this and then release. That way you're going to get a really nice crimp at the very end of your coil. Now that we've done one side of the score, let's flip the score and crimp the other side of the score as well. And that's all there is to it. Now you have a nice professional looking score with a nice color, nice weight. You can flip it around like this very easily without making much noise at all. And you have this really nice clear coil with very nice crimps on the edges there. So thank you so much for watching. All the links down in the description below for any of these materials and I'll see you in the next one.